Hello, I'm Lee. This is my pet iguana, Rocket. He's a red iguana. I had him six years. As a kid, I was always that kid that would uh, catch small reptiles, lizards, snakes, turtles, whatever I could find. You know, I just was always intrigued by reptiles. Pretty much my whole life, just animals in general. I always loved animals. Well, I got Rocket when he was like three, two to three months. He was maybe like nine to 11 inches in total length. Right now, Rocket is right at five and a half feet long, from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. You got a red iguana, the main thing is uh, making sure they have proper heating bulbs, UVB bulbs, proper humidity, a large size enclosure, like I have now. With a iguana Rocket size, you wanna at least have one that's like seven feet tall, six feet wide, four feet in depth. It's a narrative that reptiles aren't like emotionally attached or whatever, but I have tons of videos to prove it that, you know, me and Rocket have a real bond. He even gets clingy at times, like I'm trying to work out or just chill and watch TV. He always wants to join me and, uh, you know, come do this, and sit up on my lap like this, or, you know, even follow me around. So he definitely uh, broke the mold. I used to think the same thing, but, he's definitely, they definitely can get emotionally attached as well. When you're feeding a red iguana, one of rocket size, you wanna give them a healthy amount of food and their food consists of uh, leafy greens, fruits and chopped vegetables. Rocket has a tray that's like 16 inches by eight inches, I wanna say, and he gets one full tray per day. He will eat half immediately and then save have for later and come back and eat that. And uh, the main thing see is like collard greens, turnip greens, mustard greens, kale every now and then, red chart. That's the name of few, but it's a wide variety. Some of his favorite fruits are like mangoes and bananas, strawberries, watermelon. His chopped vegetable of choice is a uh, butternut squash. His treats are mainly like mangoes, some sort of fruit. You know, they like the sweet fruits, but I don't really give him like nothing that he's not supposed to have, like citrus fruits or nothing like that. So I try to keep his treats healthy for him also. Mostly it'll be mango slices. When it comes to iguana, you definitely want to make sure they get exercise. His main source of exercise is the way his enclosure is set up. I have it with obstacles to where you have to actually work to get to the top. It's not just a straight slant to where you can climb up. You have to, you know, grab on things and, you know, to, to pull himself up. And that's what, you know, gets his muscle going. But I do walk him outside. He has a harness. I walk him outside, let him walk around the house. You know, the exercise is basically just walking and climbing. You know, he loves to jump up on uh, furniture or, or climb to whatever, just pretty much whatever he can climb. He'll climb. Yeah, these are called jowls, and they're basically just muscle tissue. I don't really know the real purpose they serve, but me just knowing animals and, and, and absorbing him, they kind of like puff them up to, you know, make themselves appear bigger. They're bigger on the males. So it's probably something, you know, to attract females or, you know, to fend off predators. The flap at the bottom of his neck is called a doula. And that's uh, basically used to signal other iguanas in the wild. You know, they would let it hang down and it's one of the features too of a male. The males have a larger doula and, uh, you know, when they bob their head, that's when it's more visible. So yeah, it's kind of like their communication tool. When I walk him around, I try to do it uh, with less people around as possible. Although he's pretty calm, when he gets on a harness, you know, it's still kind of, it's not something that he just wants to have on, but he probably wouldn't go nowhere if I took it off, but I just do it for his personal safety. I'm here in Houston, you know, we have hawks flying and, you know, it's stray dogs, stray cats, and I wouldn't want anything to happen to him or him to go get up a tree or anything. People, when they see it, they're like shocked. So my neighbor saw me walking in on a harness and he just couldn't believe it. Like he had to come look and he was like, man, I just knew that was a dog. I was like, what kind of dog is that? But yeah, it was, this is a big shock to some people. You know, I'm surprised a lot of people haven't actually saw it. It's kind of, I'm not gonna say it's popular, but it's pretty normal for people to have their pet lizards on harnesses walking. I saw a guy at the beach when I was a teenager and he had this big green iguana on a harness. And I was like, whoa, I never, that was my actually my first time seeing a iguana in person. I had saw one at the, uh, at the pet shop, but it was little small ones. I never really paid attention. But this guy had one like close to the size of Rocket. And, you know, he was walking him on a harness and I was like, whoa, I didn't know they could do that. So from that very moment, I knew that I could never get an alligator. So I was like, I'm going, I'm going to get an iguana. And that's what actually made me want one, seeing one like walking on the harness.
when I have people over, most of my friends now are used to him. But like, if it's a strange person, they're just, you know, in awe. Just saying like, I can't believe how big he is. Like, that's the biggest iguana I've seen. That's what I get a lot. That's the biggest iguana I've seen. You know, a lot of people, you know, want to take pictures and videos, but for the most part, it's everybody enjoys him. Anyone thinking about getting an iguana, the first thing I would say, you know, is do your research. That's the number one thing because, you know, it's very important. Some of the uh, pros and cons of having each one, we'll start with some of the cons. If you're not very crafty, you know, like far as we're building, you're gonna have to buy a large enclosure and they could be pretty pricey. One of the other cons is the litter situation. Um, you got the large iguanas, like rocket size, you know, their waste could be a problem. So you're gonna wanna have to figure out the spot that they like to go. Most of them like to go in a certain area, you know, and build out something so you can make sure that you can keep that under control. And they, you know, they are litter trainable. So that's good. Another thing, you're gonna have to do a lot of grocery shopping. Uh, you're going to eat fruits and vegetables. You're gonna have to always go to the store and get fresh fruits and vegetables. It's like a never ending cycle. There's nowhere around it. You can't like freeze leafy greens and thaw them out. They'll be soggy. So those are some of the main cons. But as far as the pros, you get this animal that's so cool. Everybody loves it. It's exotic. It's the center of attention anywhere you take it. You're going to get a good companion, you know, contrary to proper belief. You know, they're very emotional towards you. They recognize you. They could differentiate you between other humans. You could train them their name kind of like the same with a dog. Call their name when you got food for them. Eventually they learn, okay, when I hear his name, maybe I'm gonna get some food so they'll come, but they're pretty food driven. I feel like I got lucky when I got Rocket uh, due to my prior two iguanas. The first one was a real bad experience. Uh, the second one wasn't just a bad experience. I just didn't have the proper time for him at the time. But uh, with Rocket, when I first got him, he's never been aggressive for as uh, like uh, you hear a lot of horror stories when people first get their reptiles that they hate them. Not that the pe the person hate the reptile, but the reptile hates the person. You know, they uh, bite them, tail whip. I never had that problem with Rocket. He's always been calm and cool, laid back. So, you know, I feel like I got lucky with this one and uh, that's why I've had the success that I've had with him. When Rocket's, you know, not in mating season or whatever, I would, you know, trust him around the kid. But when he they come in their mating season, uh, I wouldn't trust him around a kid, mainly because, you know, he's a five and a half foot lizard, 18, 19 pounds with sharp teeth. So if he just really wanted to cause some damage or do harm, he actually could. And I don't think a child could, you know, withstand or offend him off. They could be a family pet if you have a place to isolate them when, uh, you know, they're in their mating season. But like a small iguana, sure, that's, that's a great family pet. You know, the spikes, they're kind of prickly. Uh, but no, they, they're they not used as a weapon or anything. They could, they're flexible. Uh, so yeah, they just pretty much decoration. That's another thing. That's like some of the husbandry, uh, husbandry of the males. They have the, the taller spikes along their uh, spine. Rocket at his age now, he normally sheds one, maybe two times a year. This year he actually shed it twice. The smaller ones can shed up to like three or four times a year as they're growing. You know, the faster they grow, the more they shed. Uh, I have people that's asking me to save some so they could actually make stuff out of it. I actually have a whole shed bag from this year. So I, I saved it this year, just I'm gonna give it to them and see what they can do. Sometimes I get negative comments. People would say that thing belongs in the wild. But what you gotta understand is the iguana sold in the pet stores or, you know, captive bred. They never been in the wild. So if I was to turn them loose in the wild, uh, it could go, you know, bad. One, he's not adapted. He could get different parasites. He don't know about the predators that he had to look out for, like for you know birds of prey. He's used to me feeding him, so he probably wouldn't know how to go and just like, okay, I got to go find my own food. I get that a lot, but a lot of people in the comments, I never have to worry about it. You know, a lot of my his, his followers they shut it down for him. I haven't took him to schools yet, but that's something I kind of want to get into more this year. Is to take him around, you know, to schools and let kids kind of experiencing. And so I can break some of the, you know, the stereotypes that like people would use, probably think if they saw this large iguana, you know, they got a bad reputation in Florida for being invasive and, you know, eating up a lot of the vegetation. So 
they they were kind of getting a bad rap for some years. So, you know, it would be cool to take him around to play, like spread some positive images of iguanas. I would like to say iguanas, they all have like their own individual personality. No two iguanas are the same. Like they're, they're the same, but they all act different. Like Rocket, like he loves music. I could put on certain songs, he would bob his head, uh, you know, cause I do music. So he kind of grew up around hearing me make music all the time. So, you know, I could, he could actually like, if it's, he has songs that he like, I could put them on immediately. He'll like bop his head to. They recognize faces. If it's someone that he's never seen, I could see like a, a look in his eye where he's trying to, you know, like figure out who is it or whatever. Yeah, iguanas are not pack animals. They're more, you know, they're into solitude. That's why I uh, only have one. You know, I want to get another one, but I would have to build another enclosure because Rocket is territorial, you know, of his enclosure. So if I was to put another iguana in there with him, male or female, uh, you know, he wouldn't want him to stay in there with him. No, right now, it's just me as far as all the people that I know. Uh, I have recently met, I met a lady on, I think, Instagram, and she's here in the Houston area, and she has a, a iguana. And hers is a female, and she suggested that maybe we, like, let them meet up one day, like, at a park or something, because she takes hers out and about, just like I do. That's something we're going to do uh, maybe in the spring. It's not too, it's not cold here yet, but she says she don't like to take hers out, you know, in the cooler months, which I understand. So, uh, you know, maybe this spring, we're probably going to link up. I'll definitely have some footage of that, so that'll be awesome. Yeah, me and Rocket actually shot a movie, I think it was last year. It's on my YouTube, it's called The Golden Iguana. And you know, it's a little small movie I shot with my cell phone, a short film. You know, it came out pretty good to be my first thing doing like that. But uh, I got some good footage of Rocket in there. And it's like, it's kind of like a sci-fi movie where I find this golden iguana statue in the woods and it kind of has some twist to it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's on my YouTube channel. So thank you everyone for listening to our story. And if you want to follow our journey, please click the link below. Thank you.